A very good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I don't know where it is that you're joining, you're tuned on to the Life Signatures podcast. But whatever place it is, you're welcome. Thank you so very much for doing so. If you're joining for the very first time, listening to these episodes for the very first time, this is a teaching podcast on the subjects of purpose, productivity, and resilience. If you're looking for a serious podcast that's going to equip you, equip your psyche, equip your mind, is going to motivate you, inspire you, and ask you to, uh, you know, check a, take a look at your life and in terms of your purpose, in terms of your motivation in terms of your productivity in terms of your resilience this is it this is it it's going to just be about 15 minutes or so in the episode and you're going to learn but you will find that i am doing this in terms of series right now we are in the middle of a series we're talking about reputation we've been talking about a lot about that subject matter right now what we're handling is how exactly do we recover a wrecked reputation we started talking about that and laying a groundwork for it yesterday and today let us go deeper as far as that is concerned stay tuned Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. So, Guys, ladies and gentlemen, even as we continue doing this, I've just come across a very interesting article from uh, CBS News. This is 2024, we're talking about this. A very interesting article from CBS News. And you know the title? The title is this. Let me read it for you the title. Tesla recalls nearly 4,000 cyber trucks due to faulty accelerator pedal. Mm. Do you know the cost of a recall of 4,000 cyber trucks? Now listen to this. The reason as to why they recalled is one customer in the month of March 2024 complained about a problem with the pedal of their cyber truck. So Tesla went ahead and they did some tests and so on and they found that you know it was okay and so forth. And then, I think in Ma- in April, I should say, in 2024, again, another customer complained of the same problem. The same problem. And when Tesla did some simulations and they found that the problem is as was reported, they decided to recall their trucks, the cyber trucks that were built between 2023 I think February 2023 and April 2024. This is before anybody goes online and says negative stuff about Tesla. What are they doing? They are not just building trucks. They are also building a reputation. This reputation is what is going to help them to please their 4,000 plus customers who will in turn bring in much more other many more other customers who uh, may, may, maybe after they have interacted with them and so on and so forth and say you must get this this thing is just a beast and so on but they cannot say this thing is a beast you must get it if the pedal is wrecked and tesla has refused to rectify it the cost of building our reputations my friend when we get spoiled when we get it spoiled is a high cost 
And I think if we are serious enough, we need to have a budget for rebuilding our reputations, especially if what we did was not deliberate. Case in point, you are in the printing business and you print books for someone and the time they receive the books, the print is faint, is very faint. And it's just basically poor quality. You've spent money doing that print. What do you do? What do you do? The ultimate thing that needs to be done is to reprint the whole batch for them. For free. Not charging them. Because they already paid you. You see how painful that is? You see how costly that is? Now, if you don't, if you don't, chances are that you can say goodbye as far as a repeat business is concerned from that particular client. You can kiss that goodbye. If you don't, if you don't move to rectify, you can just kiss it goodbye. Now, there are very many things that we can be able to do in order to recover our ruined reputations. And I've already alluded to some of these things. So I'm going to start discussing one of them. We're going to do seven of them, but today let's just discuss one of them and see how what we can be able to learn from this it is simple these things are absolutely simple it's basically like when you are in a relationship for example and you know we are in different kinds of relationships as human beings we are social beings we are social animals there's a relationship between lovers there's a relationship between marriage there's a relationship between parents and children there's a relationship between a husband and wife, relationships between a mother and, 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 and son, a mother and daughter, father and son, father and daughter, a relationship between uh, cousins, a relationship between friends, between colleagues, between club mates, between employer and employee, between you and the government, <laughs> between you and your political party. And the, I mean, we are social animals. We basically social animals. We cannot live in this world like I've been labored to share in the previous episodes without banking on relationships. And therefore, if... Again, before I can even go to the if, the thing is that we are human. I said earlier, some maybe seven episodes back, I said there are two ways you can, you can get your reputation wrecked. Number one, self-sabotage. You spoil it yourself. Number two, you can get this done by someone else who is malicious. All right? Or a combination of the two. Maybe you wreck it yourself and then someone malicious goes ahead and, you know, kindles the fire on it. And therefore it it becomes much more spoiled than you would have imagined. What do you do if you're interested? We saw the cost yesterday, the cost of lost reputations or wrecked reputations every year is in billions, hundreds of billions, half a trillion dollars. Every year, half a trillion dollars is lost because of wrecked reputations. It is a big sum. It's a tidy sum. I know if you are transactional, you know what transactional means? It means that you just look at a relationship in terms of what you can gain from this one transaction. You go to get a customer, maybe, I don't know what your service is, you're offering that service and you just want this customer today. You are not creating a relationship that they can become a repeat uh, customers or they can become referral engines for you. If you're doing it just for that, then maybe you don't need to worry about your reputation. But you still need to worry about your your reputation because word goes around. Now, let me tell you this. Let's just fast forward. If you wrong someone in a business transaction and you realize that you have wronged them and you rectify that wrong tidily in a good way, you earn much more trust than you even were given before the reputation was spoiled. And therefore, they become your biggest ambassadors because the two of you have gone through hell and high water and you've come back and you've trusted one another. 
That's how beautiful it is to rectify a wrecked reputation. How do you do this? The very first thing I'm going to ask us to do is to do what is the most difficult psychological thing to do because it affects our ego. The first thing that we've got to do is to acknowledge we have done that which is wrong at the detriment and the cost of somebody else. That's the very first thing that we do. We've got to acknowledge. You do yourself a great disfavor if you keep making excuses and creating reasons and, you know, giving explanations. I mean, going on to create, write books as to why you did what you did. No, you don't do that. You acknowledge. I remember years back, a prominent church in Nairobi had a very funny poster on social media and uh, it, it was it wasn't depicted like it's a churchy thing it, it showed people with uh, dress i mean dressed l- lewdly and so on and so forth and it was like like a poster inviting the youth for a particular conference or something and people went up in arms against this particular church and all the members of that particular church were uh, yeah, no, 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 we are doing the right thing, we are doing the right thing. But when they interviewed the leader of that particular church, he acknowledged, he said, we were wrong. We were wrong. We shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have let that out. Probably I didn't know what these guys were. I didn't go through that. I don't micromanage. But I trusted these people and they just went ahead and they did what they did. We were wrong. What a name that had been saved right there. The constant refusing to acknowledge you are in the wrong, it keeps peddling your name in the mud, keeps dragging your name in the mud, keeps spoiling and soiling your reputation. The worst you can do, the worst you can do when your reputation is spoiled, whether you are the one who has done it or whether it is even, I mean, whether... It doesn't really matter. You've got to acknowledge this thing. I remember some time back, there is a particular friend of mine who went to a particular outlet to buy yogurt. And uh, he, for some instances, for some reason, the types of yogurt, the brands of yogurt that you he, he, he picked, they were kind of like expired or something like that and so on and so forth. He went on social media. And mentioned each and every single one of those brands. When he started mentioning each and every one single of those brands, there is a particular brand, actually two brands that stood out. One, they started his they started publicly. Imagine, can you believe this? The owner of this brand publicly started engaging this guy in a spat, in a in a you know debate, fighting this guy and saying that you're poor, you know, you can't afford my yogurt and all that stuff. I mean, in a public way. And this guy kept the the thread going. I, I know the more the, the more you reply, the more it gets value. I mean, it gets seen and so on and so forth. And the more your name keeps being dragged in the mud. If you tell me that your yogurt has worms, if they tell me your, your yogurt has worms, the only thing they've got to do is to mention your brand name. And now it's etched into my mind. Every time I'm going to buy yogurt, I avoid you like a plague. You don't do that. What you do, you acknowledge, even if the outlet is. 20, 200 kilometers from where you are. You don't stand up and say, oh, you are wrong. No, you are not there where, when the guy found that the, the yogurt was, was spoiled. You weren't there. You're not God Almighty. You acknowledge. I mean, you go to this guy's DM and say, I am so sorry. And that's exactly what the other company did. They said, we are so sorry and so on. And they send him a, a, a carton of nice yogurt. The other one... <laughs> Listen, you acknowledge. The very first thing you do is to acknowledge. Bill Clinton. You remember Bill, Bill Clinton? He said, I did not have sex with that woman. <laughs> Those of you who are millennials might not even know what I'm talking about or Gen Z. This is the president of the United States who was caught with his pants down. And he was impeached for that. But for months on end, the guy kept saying, I never had sex with that woman. He did not know that this woman had uh, given away the the clothes that she wore and his uh, fluids were on that particular cloth that that particular day and had a friend tricked her 
and stupidly she gave it away to the prosecutor and the prosecutor was laughing all the all his way to the to the bank long story short months down the line this guy was found culpable and i remember his famous words he said i guess there's no fancy way to say that i'm sorry <laughs> and for that big clinton joined the uh, uh, only andrew johnson as the only president that were impeached in u.s history of course they added trump in there the other year clinton had the chance to acknowledge his misdemeanors way before the pres- prosecutor ken stark will come for him so don't wait don't wait we're not continue talking about this because it's 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 kind of a busy thing it's a heavy thing but the very first thing is you've got to acknowledge publicly got to acknowledge the fall tomorrow we we'll pick it up from there until then bye bye Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.